let's kind of move on through this one. Again, I'm just going to do this the simple way, guys. But we know this is continuous and differentiable, right? So let's go ahead and find f prime of x. I am going to use the product rule. So I'm going to take the derivative of my first function, which I'm going to have to use the chain rule, and then times my second function. Add um, the derivative of my second function, which is just 1, times x minus 2 squared. Now, this looks like a whole but jumbled mess, but what I do realize is they both have a x minus 2 that I can factor out. So if I factor out this x minus 2, what I'm left with is a x minus 2 times 2 x minus 1 plus x minus 2. This is pretty nice, because then I have x minus 2. I can distribute that. And this becomes 3x minus 4. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, I would ask uh, Miss Fellner, who's across the. She's oh, she's right next door to you. You share an office. I would just ask her. She's gonna be the best. Yep. Okay. So now we set it equal to zero. Set equals 0, apply a 0 product property, you could say x equals 2 and x equals 4 thirds. Did I give you guys an interval on this one? I did not. So the intervals that we'll want to check is obviously 4 thirds is going to be less than 2. So I'll say from negative infinity to 4 thirds. And I'll also do from 4 thirds to infinity. Okay, I'm just going to use a number line for this one just to make it kind of simple. So we have. What? Ah, jeez. Thank you. Four thirds to two, and then two to infinity. So we'll just say four thirds is going to be right here, and we'll say two is right there. So let's go ahead and check something less than four thirds, but to infinity. Um, I think um, f of um, uh, 0 or 1 is good. Here, you could do f of 3 halves. What did I pick? Jeez. Oh, I didn't show. And then you could do like f of 3. So I'm just going to do the plus or minus because, again, I'm trying to do this quickly. So if I plug in 0 back into my function, that becomes a negative, And that's a negative. Would you guys agree? Mm -hmm. Negative times a negative is going to give you a positive. 3 halves, which is the same thing as like 1.5. So that becomes a negative. That becomes a um, positive. Increasing. How do I get an? Oh, so it's a negative times a positive, which is a negative. And then here, if you plug in f of 3, that's a positive. And that's a positive. So that would be a positive. Right? So you can say that it's increasing on the interval of negative infinity to 4 thirds. And it's also increasing on the interval, you could say union, 2 comma negative infinity. You don't have to. You don't have to use the union. But I didn't show union last time, so I figured I'd show it this time. You could say it's decreasing on the interval of negative 4 thirds, 4 thirds comma 2. And you could say that it has a max, a relative max, at x equals 4 thirds. And it has a relative min at x equals 2. Okay? Again, 